with some uh, pretty pretty good names to start things off. Haven't really looked at the deck list yet, but no, they're great names. Orbe Garage Yardbird versus Igorov the Sage of Greatness. We're off to an excellent start. Um, so off of first look, it looks like both decks. You know, on first reading, nothing's jumping out to me quite yet. Nothing extraordinary, right? Sometimes you see like the triple dust pixie mm -hmm. or in the nature's call combo, but here we seem to have just two decks. Solid deck, solid sweets from all the house. We do see a double routine job on Jeff's side, which is always good. He's got a miasma to block the key forward. So we have some really key cards there, right? On Jay's side, we have some cards we don't see too much play. We've got a Killzord MK9001 upgrade that gives plus two armor, plus two health, and skirmish, but every time you fight, you gain a chain. A really interesting one, but one that we don't see too, too often. We actually have a Maverick over on Jay's side, the Maverick Mimicry, Mimicry coming out in the uh, Mars house, which is kind of cool. Yep. That untamed card lets you play an action from the opponent's discard pile. And again, I'm looking at the Sanctum house, just some really strong creatures. Barrister Joya, the one that prevents reaping. Uh, we have some Abad the Grim, which is a little bit of capture. And again, a Doom of the Martyr, which is when she dies, draw two, heal your creatures, could be really interesting. So a lot of really cool stuff coming out. But again, no crazy combos that I'm seeing them drawing into quite yet. Fair. I am curious to see how much use Sacrificial Altar is going to get on Jeff's side. Because I'm looking and immediately which of the eye seems to be the only human... Bad Penny. And Bad... Oh, Bad Penny. That's correct. Now, Bad Penny... Yeah, I guess that's a good way to get rid of your bad penny. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, uh, that is the combo with the Sacrificial Altar. There you go. So, there we have it. We have at least two cards there. And I don't believe there's anything else, though. So, it looks like Jeff is going to be starting. Uh, he starts with the Control of the Weak in hand. He does have a Drumble as well, though, which is not exactly the thing you want to see uh, right off the bat. But he does have that Dew Fairy, too. That Double Reap card could be a really excellent start. So, let's see if he mulligans. It doesn't look like he is, so he's going to play out the Dew Fairy. An elusive creature, two power. If you reap, you get an extra amber. A really great play to start, especially if you're going into a untamed turn on your second play. Exactly. Igor, an excellent card. Draw three cards off the top. You know, you archive one, you add one to your hand. Oh, add one to your hand and discard the others. That's my mistake. Right. Um, so again, a good way to sift through your deck, and especially pull those cards that you need right off the beginning. So I guess the other thing here is we have an Age of Ascension deck versus... Call the Archons deck. Ah, we do. This is going to be kind of cool. Now, there's a lot of debate. I heard some people saying, like, oh, Call of the Archons is way better, it's way better. But honestly, seeing some of these Age of Ascension decks come out uh, and just come out swinging, nonetheless, yeah. has been a really, really nice way to see it. So I think that was a poke that was played. Yep. Uh, just putting a damage on there. Not going to get the effect off that because, of course, Duferi has two health. Not going to be destroyed. We'll get the Amber. We'll get the Amber, though. And, of course, get cycling through your deck. Relentless Whispers coming out, stealing that Amber, getting an Amber. What a great card when you pluck one of those two power creatures. A two Amber swing off that card. Miasma comes out a little early. Not exactly what you want to see, but burn it for the Amber. Ooh. Why not? Interesting choice. I, I agree. Given I agree. the mimicry, because they know each other's deck list, right? Right. I don't know if that I put that tool in the discard. That's, that's a really fair point, too, because if he is holding that mimicry, especially in the Mars house, again, it might have been something he missed. It's easy. When with those Mavericks, sometimes you read them over and you're like, huh. The other thing that it can be is sometimes holding on, uh, holding on to cards can just really disrupt Precisely. your flow so badly. Yeah, and these guys probably know their decks uh, better than we are off first glance, so maybe there's something he's fishing for and he really just needs to cycle through. In all fairness, he is running a routine job deck, and if he doesn't have any of those in hands, he wants those in his discard pile. Child of Safeguard coming out. A really interesting one. Just a taunt and deploy. Not really seeing the deploy come into too much benefit since it's the first creature on the board. But an interesting effect. Now that you can place the taunt wherever you want, I always thought that was kind of cool. No. We have a stun do fairy, which is making that untamed call a little less uh, a little less thrilling than it could have been. We see a whole whack of discards in hand, too. It is going to be the Lost in the Woods. Just shuffling the do fairy back into the deck as well as the Child of Safeguard. Might as well. Yeah, again, gain the Amber. Like you said, cycling cars, not holding on to it. And I guess if you have a Dew Fairy that's stunned, it has one damage on it. Yeah, you your, your creature doesn't matter. Exactly. You might as well recur it. Chow's kind of a pain. Chow is a pain. You know, it's a beefy creature. The full moon comes out. Is that to play or is that just to burn? Looks like it's just to burn it. Unfortunate that he didn't draw into any more creatures, but... Wow, there's a lot of good uh, mimicry tar targets for Jay. Oh, Eureka comes out. A great card. An alpha 
has an amber, you gain two amber, you archive two random cards from your hand, though, which is a fascinating effect. Sure. So, let's see if those are the cards that he wants to archive. You never know. Two of them go away. You know, Jay kept them close to his chest. Couldn't quite see what they were. He Discards discard by Nate Richer. All right. Mars first. Gains an amber. And that's it. So we have six amber. Jay did set. He says check. So it's two, six. Up. Six on the card. One was just hiding in the corner. And Jeff is sitting at four. Now, unfortunately, if he went up by one more amber, that drumble could actually be of use. But it's not going to be of any use right now. All right, so we have a control of the week coming down. Jeff is calling Logos and just playing the Succubus. Going up to five Amber himself. Jay is forced into Logos. Director of Zix, I believe, is that an archive off the top of your deck? At the start of your turn, archive the top card of your deck, yep. So its effect's not gonna happen quite yet. Lab work, lots of archiving coming into play here. Yeah, I don't know if he well, gotta pay, gotta listen to make to see when he's actually drawing his archive. Yeah, his archive seems to be just off screen, so a little challenging to see how many cards you're building up in there when he draws it. Sometimes. So they are just noticing the succubus. Uh, we have Jay who drew up one too many cards, trying to determine. They're just trying to determine what the official ruling is. I think the official ruling is that they draw a random card and put it back in the deck. So now we just have our TO coming over, helping them determine what the what the option is. So now, yeah, just like all for one gaming mentions in the chat, the official ruling is your opponent gets to look at your hand and choose one to get discarded. So a or pretty a pretty to return, detrimental sorry. effect, uh, being able to not only get knowledge of your opponent's hand but also choose the card. Shutterkin goes back. So Shutterkin is shuffled back in. Professor Shutterkin. The creature, if I'm not mistaken, that lets you draw one for every Logos creature you control. An interesting choice, but one that is potentially dangerous. And especially if he does have an elusive uh, Logos creature there, giving mm -hmm. him extra draw power. Always a problem. So a fair call by Jeff right there. Jeff not able to forge a key quite yet, sitting at 5 Amber. He seems to have a bit of a hodgepodge hand. So oh, Jay is picking, he's picking, has chosen House Mars. He has the Mars first in hand and a, a zookeeper. So he's going to be able to steal, I'm guessing, the succubus with a reap. Put that right into his archive. A really excellent play. Mars first, a great card. Especially when you have a good creature like that with a powerful reap effect that doesn't always get to be triggered right away. So the video is back. We're not gonna. We're gonna probably go the rest of the round without table audio and fix it in between. But you guys won't even notice the difference. So we will just play our figure out what's going on by what we see. Shouldn't be too too bad. Yeah. Uh, Stealer Souls looks like it was a fight, if I'm not mistaken, into the Zookeeper. So perhaps not realizing that it had elusive. I'm not quite sure. But it doesn't seem like it was a reap, or maybe I missed that. And he's still holding on to that drumble. So this is that a challenge that you were talking about. Do you yeah. hold the card or do you pass it up? Both are at one key. We have Jay at four amber. Jeff only at uh, one amber. And we have him calling Mars again. Stealing creatures. Mars first. Reading him again. Stealing another creature. That's three creatures now. That's a succubus. That's a stealer of souls. That's a snuffle gator. His archive Oof. is just chock full of uh, Jeff's creatures right now. Yes. Challenges, though. I, if I'm not mistaken, unless he drew it, which he very well might have, uh, he also has some of his own cards in that archive. And as you right. know, as soon as he draws those, those creatures go right back into Jeff's hand. So now he has a little bit of a, a little bit of a choice to make, but one that doesn't seem too hard. If you can steal a creature, I think that's always a good choice. We also, well, we've also, yeah, we've also seen some of the cards that he has played, so we know he's got some strong cards outside of his archives. Right. And uh, it may just mean they come back sooner. Exactly. So, again, yeah, a great point. Thinning your deck, not too bad of a call either. 
he is already at 7 amber, Jeff only at 2, and it seems like Jay is ramping really, really quickly. Still using that Lash of Broken Dreams again to prevent him from uh, forging his key next turn. The three times Mars first is something that didn't jump out to me at first, but with those on-play effects, or those not on-play, rather, those reap effects that you really want to trigger as much as possible, three times yeah. Mars first is a really, really excellent, excellent boon in this deck. So Drumble comes out, and this is... He was holding it for a reason. So the Drumble comes out, captures 7 Amber, but you know what? The Zookeeper don't care. The Zookeeper doesn't care about Elusive. No. The Zookeeper doesn't care about how much Amber you've captured. Because if he calls Mars again, or even just chooses to Mother Gun it, that Drumble is going down. It does seem like his hand is a little thin on Mars cards. So calling Mars again isn't going to let him go through his deck. It seems like he's stacking a lot of Sanctum creatures. He's on his... Well, all of his Amber's gone because it's on Drumble. My mistake. Uh, he does have to deal with that Drumble soon, but let's see if he calls uh, Sanctum first, or if he chooses just to go with Mars. And it is the Sanctum call. So here we see, I believe it's Chal the Safeguard, the Deploy and Taunt, yes. a 4-2. Coming down right next to the Zookeeper, making it even harder to deal with. Then next to that, we have a Lion Botrum. Each of its neighbors gets plus 2 power. Not too bad. Then we have a take, uh, what is this? A Free Markets. Free Markets is an interesting card. You gain an Amber for each house that's represented in play. So right now... Other than Sanctum. Other than Sanctum. So right now it's two. So a, a good two Amber play. Not too shabby at all. And he's letting that Drumble sit out for one more turn. There's no particular rush. Again, he tied up the Amber count. He uh, has a Key Forge. And he has seven Amber on the field. Routine Job comes out, though. Stealing an Amber. Putting a little bit more of a swing into Jeff's favor. If we disregard the seven Amber yeah. uh, Drumble, of course. Ah, that's interesting. Shadow Self. Naughty the Thief. Double Naughty the Thief. And a bad penny. So let's see what happens now, because now Jeff has some options, right? He has a double steal, he has his routine job in the discard pile, and he's got a whole whack of uh, creatures to work with. So it's in an interesting spot. How is Jay going to respond? The easiest solution is to reap with the Zookeeper and get the Drumble back and start pushing that key, but that's not exactly the best turn. No. But it does get you 7 Amber, so maybe it is the best turn. If well, we it's it not up. a bad turn, but it will happen at some point. So there's an argument. Oh, it's time for the Mimicry. Oh, I think it's just revealing it with Mother Gun. So well. Just popping Bad Penny back. Then he's going to Zookeeper, and Zookeeper dodges a lot of the effectiveness. Well, not a lot of the effectiveness of Shadow Self. It completely gets away from Shadow Self. So Drumble is going to go into uh, Jay's Archive as well. Then he's going to play the Mimicry. And what is he going to do? What is he going to Mimic? No. Yeah. Nature's Call would be pretty powerful right now. Control the Weak would be a really excellent play. Relentless Whispers on the Naughty the Thief would be an excellent one as well. So many options. Just uh, a whole slew of really excellent actions. And it is the Nature's Call. Going to bounce all three of those creatures back into hand. Slow down that turn immensely. Putting himself up to, if I believe, 10 Amber. And putting Jeff at no board and right. 3 Amber. A really, really great turn. God, such a good Maverick. Having that Mimicry in Mars House, great. That's a, that's a really good card to have. So now Jeff is a little bit on the back foot. Down in Amber. He does have the Lash, though. And if Jay's at 10 Amber and he makes him spend 9, he goes down. Is it down 10 or is he 11? He might Number be at 11. 11. Let's see. No, just 10. All right. So if he goes down to 1 Amber, that slows it down a bit, right? Yes. If he doesn't do the Lash, Jay is well, almost at another key. And then this game seems to be even further out of reach. He's also, it looks like he's got a Mermook in hand. So not quite as effective as the Lash in terms of taxing, but it might let him have a more effective turn to build off of. Right. Depending on, no, but it doesn't look like, look like he's got a lot of uh, untamed in his hand either. Yeah. And now Jeff has a hand full of cards that he thought were going to be on the board. He has a hand full of things that he has to now figure out what he wants to deal with. He is going to go back to Shadow Zone. Which is an interesting play. Let's see how much he can actually steal. Routine job steals two now, because there's a routine job in the discard pile. So he puts himself at a key and puts Jay down to seven. Not bad at all. Can he? I don't think so. No, I don't think he can it's take gonna him It's going to be off. some naughties. Uh... But this is a pretty, pretty tough board to deal with. And he's got the key charge. Holding on to his hand, he has a key charge. So he's at six. I don't think, if I'm not mistaken, if Jay's list has too much steel, if any, or capture, actually. No, not a lot. So it seems like Jeff, if he gets six, he's going to stay at six. And then with the two naughties... Oh, sorry. I, we, we're already behind in the uh, 
I'm already behind in terms of marking the forges. <laughs> well, he just forged his second key. That's okay. He's down to one amber. Jay is on his last key. But he's got some work ahead of him. He doesn't have as big of a board. Uh, and if he keeps calling Mars, he's going to kind of uh, limit himself in a lot of ways. Right. So let's see what options he has. I do see the standardized testing, which could be interesting, except for the fact that you have these one power creatures on the board. So you get rid of the Shadow Self, but you also just get rid of Bad Penny and Urchin, which have already pretty much... Yeah, that's uh, not, a, not uh, huge. If he was to only have the two powers as lowest, that's a good way to deal with the Naughty Thieves, even though it sacks his own Zookeeper. But I think that Zookeeper's put in enough work. Oh, there's more work for it to do. There is more work for it to do. I do see a poke in hand. A poke could be a good way just to... Oh, oh, we almost played the standardized testing, but uh, the poke's not going to get him out of it because the poke is only going to get rid of one of those one powers. He is going to get a draw card. I don't know if he plays the standardized testing here. I don't know if that's the right play, but he's going to do it anyways. So the Urchin's going to die, and the Shadow Self is going to die, which is a great way to get rid of Shadow Self, but it doesn't deal with those Naughty Thieves, and that's really what's a big threat right now. Hexbeon, love that card. Can't destroy it. Archive's top card of your deck. More Archive. But this is the weird thing now. Because there's so many creatures in the Archive from Jeff, Hexbeon and Director of Zix could really throw some good cards in there, too. Because yes. Zix is just off the top of your deck. Zix for sure. Uh, yeah, both of them. Yeah. So this will be interesting. Again, uh, he might have to draw his Archives up eventually. That might just be an inevitable fate. But we'll by, see. by the time he does it, it might be an enormous hand, and he just needs to win the next turn. Right. And which is the eye coming down? Another threat. A Mermook coming down. Increasing key cost. And a cooperative hunting. Ah, uh, so here we go. This is where I think the Zookeeper is going to finally have its last stand. This might be the death knell of the Zookeeper. Yeah. Two points of damage going on to the Zookeeper. Where is he going to put the other two? He's going to do it on the Hexbeon. An interesting choice, and I think a good one. Because now, it puts him in the spot where the top card of the deck is archived. And if Jay really wants it, Jeff gets his cards back. Everyone's got a key now, or everyone's got two keys, rather. I do see some interesting discards in hand. We've got the Gateway to Disc plus the Dust Imp combo. And with the Lash of Broken Dreams, he can do some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. But he can also loop some interesting things with the Witch of the Eye. He's got Mermook to work with and the double Naughty the Thieves. With no real answers on Jay's side besides the double attack from Sanctum, it could be a pretty oppressive board state to get out of. He might. He's probably not going to want a Gateway to Disc because he's got such a strong state right now. Yep. I do see some good, uh, a big Sanctum hand. So let's see what kind of magic Jake can uh, throw it onto the board. Barrister Joya would be good, but it doesn't stop Naughty from stealing. We'll see what happens, though. Barrister Joya, out on the field. Barrister Joya is the card where, you know, enemy creatures cannot reap. Doesn't affect Naughty the Thief, but does prevent the Witch of the Eyes effect. So that's a really, that's really powerful. Another line, Boutrum coming out, giving that Barrister Joya even more power. And then we have... I believe a Shield of Justice not, uh, is going to prevent creatures from taking damage when they fight. So let's see if there is going to be some fighting going on, or if Jay is going to double reap. That doesn't seem to be necessarily the best play, because it's only put him up to five. I yeah. don't think that's what he wants to do. It seems like the Witch of the Eye has got to go. Yeah, it does. But the Witch of the Eye can't reap right now. Right, that's also true. So do you kill it? Do you kill one of the Naughty the Thieves? Do you double attack into a Naughty the Thief just to get it off the board? That might be the play. But we'll see what he is. This is the man who's piloting the deck. He's taking out Mermook. Makes sense. Mermook posing a threat. Why not? Oh, he is putting a damage on. Which he shouldn't, if that was Maybe Shield of Justice. Wasn't a Blinding Light. I think it was. It wasn't another. Free Markets was played earlier. No, it would have been the Shield of Justice. There's no other events. So he shouldn't be taking that damage, but he's going to take it anyways. And, oh, they're... I believe they're forgetting Elusive. Oh, Grey Rider. Never mind. That's my mistake. That was a double attack from Lion Botram because of Grey Rider's deploy, uh, ready and fight with a neighboring creature. Ah, right, okay. So there we go. Uh, not bad. Not a bad board clear. Which of the eyes essentially nullified as long as Barrister Joy, who is a 7-1 creature right now. Yep. Uh, and Naughty the Thief. One Naughty the Thief you can deal with. Two, a little oppressive. One, not so bad. What's Jeff's response here? Because now he has a board staring him in the face, and I think that gateway of the disc is looking oh so tempting right now. But he should play his Dust Imp out first if he is going to play that card, and I hope he sequences that to get those two Amber. Because he also has a Life Ward too, which could be really interesting if he's trying to prevent a repopulation of that board. It's not going to happen this turn. Ooh, okay. So he doesn't quite... He doesn't ditch the Dust Imp. 
which would have been nice just to net him two amber. Yeah, it seems odd, but that's okay. Maybe he's saying, like, I can get a reef out of it, and then I can attack into something. That's a, that's a viable option. I might have just chucked my dust into the wind, honestly. Yep. But, you know, I'm not the one piloting this deck. We have three chains right there, and there he does. He seems like he was very consciously not sacking his dust in. He wants that on the field. Uh, Toxin out, a great card if you can get it going. Discard a random card can be so powerful if it hits something that your opponent really wants. Uh, how many Mars creatures did he put? Were there any Mars creatures? No, eh? So he's looking at his archives right now, and he's wondering, should I take this? Because it seems like there is that MK, ooh, whatever it's called. What is it called? An M, Killzord MK 9001 in his pile, and he's like, man, that would be a pretty good card to have. It does, right. it does give him a chain. He's going to reveal two. Oh. oh, does he kill? I don't think he should kill that. He's going to reveal three. Yes, he's going to kill Toxin. He's going to kill Toxin. I was going to say, I'm like, a weird choice to kill the Dust. Yes. <laughs> that might not be the best call, especially when it would tie you up in Amber. You definitely don't want to give your opponent any momentum at this late stage of the game. He has a Glixo Proliferator, which is a card I really like. Ooh, destroy them all. This does mean that he's going to kill the Dust Imp, though. Okay. Dust Imp's going to go. Because you have to destroy an artifact, a creature, and an upgrade if possible. So we do as much of the card as possible. Yeah. He maybe wanted to sack his own creature. I don't know. But it is what it is. Life Ward's going down. I don't know. What would you have picked? Would you have picked the Life Ward or the Lash? Because mm. Lash is a perpetual threat. The Life Ward's a one time. Yeah, I would have picked the Lash. I, I think I would have picked the Lash too. I understand the Life Ward, especially if I have a lot of creatures in hand. I do get it. So the last thing he has to slow you down, to prevent you from capturing a key. That's what I mean. That's not already in this discard pile. Because now you can't just push six. You've got to push nine. Yeah. And that's going to be tough. Ooh, we got double Dew Fairy, especially with a double Dew Fairy on the board, and no options to deal with that. I don't believe that Jay has any out of hand kill cards. Poke is not going to do it. So what is he going to do to respond to this? Because that is an easy uh, four Amber. And if I'm not mistaken, Jeff, is he still holding the key charge? Or did he discard that? He might have discarded that. I'm not sure. He's got, theoretically, in his archives, I'm sure he has uh, ammo for his mother gun. Yeah. I did see Jeff draw a Poltergeist, though. So that's interesting, too. Uh, because he can actually get rid of that mother gun if he's really worried it's going to be a threat. Glix Lix, oh, I know I can't. I can never say the uh, Mars names. Glixlixel Proliferator, the Proliferator. No, no. Oh yes. Glixel Proliferator. Glixel, yes. Pro, yes. Uh, it is on a flank, Oof. so we can loop some Mars cards. I'm not sure what he has in his discard currently. And as I'm looking at the chat, All for One Gaming makes a really good point. He's saying that if he discards or keeping the Lash in play forces him to play this, the Life Ward is an Omni effect. So an interesting choice and a tough one, but yeah, definitely a viable one to kill that Life Ward. So, Igor comes out, draw three, discard two, put one in the hand. He seems to have pulled a Mars card. Ooh, he's, he's tossed, is he in a bit of a spot? He's wondering what he should discard. He knows he's going to go into a bigger Logos turn, so he's thinking of drawing into the Logos card, but I think that Destroy Them All is a tempting, tempting card to have in hand. Yeah, so he does pick up the Destroy Them All. Destroy Them All is going to let him deal with that Lash, actually. Wild Wormhole comes out. Let's see what it gets him. Barrister Joya, preventing from reaping. What a great card to pull into, especially with two Dew Fairies on the screen. So that is going to nullify that four Amber gain. Sutter King comes out. Interesting that Joya was played uh, where she was. Don't want to put her on the flank around Glixel Proliflator because his effect only happens if he's on a flank. A little maybe bit of a misplay. Not really thinking with Wild Wormhole. Kind of just chucking the card down, seeing what you get. But we have 8 Amber. So Jay is forced to pick Dis this turn. Forced into Dis without a Dis hand. And not the spot you want to necessarily be in, but the Mother Gun's going to go down with Poltergeist. There's obviously no Mars in his hand to do anything to the creatures. Going to go up to 5 Amber himself. Can he push a key? He can't. He can't get himself up to 6. Sheds his last chain, though. And he should be drawing back up to a full hand now. So a really good turn for Jay. Jay is pushing 8 Amber. He can't forge. But Jeff also can't forge. So unless he draws into some sort of key cheat, which is going to be really hard with Barrister Joya out on the field preventing reaping, it's going to be a tough match ahead of him. 
If I'm going to predict anything, I know Jay is holding that destroy them all. And getting rid of that lash, there it is. So he has to unfortunately get rid of his own upgrade. Because he ha- oh, no, never mind. Sorry. There was an upgrade on the Dew Fairy, of course. Why would he get rid of his own upgrade? He reaps with Glixel Prolifer Proliferator. Going up to 9 Amber. And... I think that's it for his turn. Unless he has something else in hand. Does he have anything else to play? No. Does he need to play anything else? No, that's all the pressure he needs for this turn. 9 Amber to 5. That's the game. Jeff calls it. A really good game. Really back and forth. That Zookeeper coming in clutch. Stealing so much. Uh, Barrister Joy just coming down right at the right time. Wild Wormhole. What a claim.